You can take a man out of the ghetto, but you can't take the ghetto out of the man. Siri Henry was born on August 7, 1977, in Les Ulysses, a small Paris suburb, and grew up in a ghetto where society's outcasts lived and all kinds of crimes were committed. His Henry family lived in a small apartment, where living conditions were not ideal. His father, Anton Thury, directed him towards sports at a young age and encouraged him to channel his energy in that direction. Sometimes he thought I was too harsh on him, but I have no regrets because it kept him out of trouble. He said that Henry had two options, to either study or become a footballer, and that he did not leave him with any other choice. Henry was not particularly good at his studies, so he chose football. Henry's natural talent for football quickly became evident, starting with playing in the Lesulis and Palliasevo club's youth teams. At the age of 14, he won the French Football Federation's Clearfontiana selection process in 1994. He was discovered by Arsene Wenger, who was then in charge of Monaco, and transferred to the club. The French coach had a special interest in young potential players even back then. Monaco brought in Jantagana as the new coach, and Henry had a successful for and a half year period with the team, during which he won a French league championship. In 1996, he was named the Young Player of the Year in France and won the European Championship with the French under 18 team. He played 122 official matches and scored 25 goals, but he wasn't a player who was very close to scoring goals because he often played on the wings. In fact, he had a big opportunity to show his talent when he was invited to the French national team for the 1998 World Cup, which was held in France. He drew attention by scoring three goals in six matches in the tournament in which France won the championship. Henry was like what Mbappe is today, a few years older. He had incredible agility and speed excellent dribbling ability, and was a pure talent. He paralyzed the right wings of all the opponents. They played against in the tournament, a new star was born in France. Its season transfer window, however. Juventus coach Marcello Libby couldn't see the talent in him, which prevented him from showing his skills on the field. He was asked to contribute to the defense, which prevented him from playing his own game. He couldn't adapt tactically, and even his own fans were booing him during training sessions, which he couldn't handle. Wenger took over at Arsenal and transferred Henry for 16 million euros in the summer of 1999, and Henry's London days began. Wenger had a brilliant idea for Henry, he was an expert in developing young players. The French coach believed that all this kid needed was a little confidence and some shooting practice to become a world-class striker, as he had all the qualities needed to be won. Henry was flawless throughout the season, scoring 25 goals in 43 matches, showing that scoring goals was in his genes. The next big tournament was Euro 2000, where the French national team didn't lose a single match, let alone lose, in the tournament where Henry played five matches and scored three goals. They defeated Diddley in the final to win their second consecutive major tournament. Zidane and Henry were once again in the lead roles. Henry's development and Arsenal's progress went hand in hand. It wasn't easy to challenge Manchester United, but they took one step forward and then another. Henry grew with each passing day and he was becoming more accustomed to his role as the team's key player. When Henry turned his face to the right of the goal, from the left diagonal, you knew that position would be a goal. Siri Henry was the most stylish striker have ever seen. They finished second in the 2000-2001 season, the next year. It was time to dethrone Manchester United, Arsenal finished the season with only three defeats, and they became champions with 87 points, beating the Red Devils both at home and away. Henry scored 31 goals in 44 matches, 
and won his first championship with Arsenal, the team was a legendary group of players, each performing their job flawlessly. The championship race was fiercely competitive. In the 2002-2003 season, with only three weeks to go, Arsenal lost at home to Leeds United. And once again, they lost the championship to Manchester United. But they wouldn't take long to regain their title. The next season, they scored 90 points and became champions. Without losing a single match, this championship remains the only unbeaten championship in Premier League history. Henry was a part of the French national team that lost to Greece. In the quarterfinals of Euro 2004, world football was changing. And they were among the victims of Greece, who won the championship by parking the bus in front of their goal and winning their last three matches with 1-2-0 scores. In 2005, Henry played in his first and only Champions League final with Arsenal. If he had lifted such a big cup here, he might never have left. But things didn't go well that night. Barcelona beat Arsenal to 2-1 and won the championship. In the 2006-2007 season, Henry was already 30 years old. And he said goodbye to London. He won for top scorer titles, to Premier League titles, and three FA Cup championships with Arsenal. He was also named the Premier League Player of the Year twice. Henry scored 228 goals in 377 official matches for Arsenal, making the club's top scorer of all time. In the summer of 2007, he transferred to Barcelona for 22 million euros, but things didn't go as planned there either. In 2008, Barcelona hired Pep Guardiola as the team's head coach, and they began to achieve rapid results. Winning the league championship, the King's Cup, and the Champions League final against Manchester United. Henry had completed the only missing trophy in his career and had now overcome the final hurdle to engrave his name in golden letters. In the history of world football, Dare had experienced the joy of winning the UEFA Super Cup, second La Liga Championship, and Spain Super Cup. Henry's contract with Barcelona had expired, and he decided to go to America. He left the Catalan team with six trophies after playing 117 matches and scoring 47 goals in three seasons. In 2011, Arsenal showed their gratitude to Henry for the 125th anniversary of the club's founding by erecting a Thierry Henry statue at the entrance of the Emirates Stadium. In the middle of the 2011-2012 season, Arsenal sent their forwards Chemek Kan Gervinho to the Africa Cup of Nations, and they needed a forward player for two months. Who could they get for such a short time, of course? Thierry Henry accepted, the French striker had returned to his beloved home. Arsenal had no aspiration for a championship or anything else that season, but that was going to be the story of the season. In the 68th minute of the FA Cup match against Leeds United, Henry came into the game and, after about 10 minutes, found the ball again on the left flank. He made a curling shot to the far corner with his right foe and brought victory to his team. Anyone who witnessed that moment felt like they had traveled on a time machine and went back to the era of the great arsenal. Henry retired from active football in 2014, leaving behind a magnificent career with goals, championships, and trophies, however, undoubtedly, he will always be remembered for his inspirational performance in the Arsenal jersey. It was a pleasure to watch you. Farewell, velvet-footed man.